Drama queens. Uh, what I think one of the main reasons I love opera is that it gives a platform for the largest emotions and the deepest sentiments, and this this opportunity for an audience member to come into the theater or put on their their stereo system and escape from the everyday life via these characters that are larger than life. And in particular, we go into the world of Baroque music, where things are a little stylized and, and, and the plots are a little bit more outlandish than we're used to in modern times. And sometimes we think, oh, the plots, you know, they're crazy. They are, they are. And the reason they're crazy is because these women and these characters need this landscape to, to throw their emotions against. You know, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting, <laughs> you know, where they just splatter the different colors. This world of theater and drama and these women who are powerful and potent and sensual and vulnerable and fragile, they're everything that makes up a really um, terrifying and wonderful woman. They come in and they, they give us this excuse to love and hate and have jealousy and rage and vengeance and joy in the grandest, biggest fashion. Alan, the Lonico Courtyard, yeah. where we're recording. We've recorded several things here, mm -hmm. Ario Dante, and now we're doing Drama Queens. Yeah. So whenever we talk about the leading ladies, in particular, of the Baroque, your eyes light up and they get, <laughs> it does this. And we talk about Alcina, or we talk about, we've talked about Cleopatra a lot, Popea. What is it about these women and, and the music that, that um, illuminates them? What is it that makes you do, <gasps> Um, well, <laughs> it is uh, it is drama. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the the basic drama, which is always um, exaggeration, over the top, larger than life. It's uh, it's never boring, no. and uh, a lot of music is to me boring, but the drama queens, especially of the Baroque, are not boring. <laughs> So when I was choosing the music, I went in and I wanted to make sure I was trying to um, tick off, <laughs> check off all these different emotions from, you know, incredible, almost suicidal pathos to vengeance and, and everything in between. The other criteria for me that I wanted to do was I wanted to find some music that, that um, had not been heard in recent times. There's just a treasure trove of music that is sitting in libraries waiting to be discovered.
one of them that, that just, it made me literally, it, it stopped my breath when I looked at it as a manuscript. It's Madre Diletta Abracciami of Porta, and it's the character Iphigenie, which we all know the story of Iphigenie. This is the point where she's headed to her death, and she knows she's going towards it. She says to her mother, Abracciami, Confortami, you know, hug me, comfort me. But then in the B section, she says, you must forgive father. Oof, <laughs> this, is, this is big. And she says, then in peace, I can go to my death, but not until we know what this forgiveness is. When you look at it on the page, it's a Siciliana, it's a 12-8, and it doesn't look so interesting. But then I started singing through the line. Alan and I were, were in Milan together, and he says, ah, I don't know about this piece. And I said, huh. And it just, it captured me. I felt the, this sort of figure eight circular motion already. The, um, the emotion so tender of the, mo of the mother holding the, the daughter in the arms. It was just so tender. And, and I thought, this is something really special. We have another queen, Berenice, the Jewish priestess. And this is by an opera by Orlandini. And it's completely unknown. It's not even cataloged. And I think, you know, Alan told me that he was in the Stanford Library, or the Berkeley Library, and he's looking up and he just sees this title way up on the shelf, Berenice. And, and he just went, oh, that's a queen. He had no idea what it was going to be like. And he sent me a few of the pieces. And these are real, they're a bit odd. But they're such a discovery. They are, they don't really fit into a category. They can't really say it's like Handel or like another. They really are a unique voice of this music. And I find them sort of infectious. We were playing with the orchestra, this da torbida procedia. And it's this sort of fanfare of music. And, and she's in, in front of the, the pharaoh and, she, and she's you know, saying, I will follow you where you lead, you know, amongst all this storm and the raging winds and all this, I will follow you. And it's, she's actually lifting him up. And it's this, again, this idea of the potenza, of the potere, the power of a, of a queen. And she's reveling, she's almost drunk on the euphoria of this, of this power. And the strings are going crazy. And, and it's, for me, this is, this is a gift because it's this idea of the Baroque world of music, but creating something essentially for the first time because it hasn't been heard in centuries. So this, this gets my blood pumping. I think it's pretty, it's pretty fabulous to do that.
we dip a little bit past the Baroque and we go all the way into Haydn, which um, we can keep this because we can keep the same tuning and we can keep the same instrument. Really, Haydn unleashes all of his forces for this number. Um, it's in our project, it's certainly the orchestra at its biggest. And what we have is, is Armida realizes at this point that she has been betrayed. And she is about to be destroyed in her heart and in her, her power. And she is not having any of that because she is not going to be destroyed alone. She's going to make sure she takes everything down in the path in front of her and around her and she's really, she's going to destroy the world. And it's a relentless presto, it's a, it's a very fast tempo, it's, um, she's coming a bit unglued, it's a little bit manic, it's a little bit, there's a, of course there's the classical structure of Haydn, but over that he gives these syncopations and these breathless ta 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 ta, and it's really, um, it, it's, it, it's a dramatic scene at its most, most potent because he, he holds back nothing, and as a result vocally she holds back nothing as well. She goes up into the stratosphere, she stays there, she crashes down, and, um, Sure enough, destruction is hers. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 